Thanks so much. Um, I'm going to go through this very fast, I think, because uh, it is uh, in the Philippines, I think we were uh, a test case. I think it's been very uh, successful and I have both the problem for you and a potential solution. We are still in the bottom of the trough coming out. I think the, the more resilient we are coming out of this, the better it, we, <laughs> we have no choice. Um, so let me, it's all about information, right? We've been talking about that. And for me, I've been around a long time. It is my birthday today, but I won't tell you how old I am. Um, uh, but for it started for me with, uh, ah, let's, oh, not clicking. One more time. Yeah, sorry. You connected? And, oh, gosh, okay. <laughs> that, that's me through the years. Um, I, when The black and white one from the 80s. So I, I have been around a long time when it would take weeks before you can get out of uh, before you can get out of a story out. And then, then we went through the 90s uh, where we started getting live shots out in the Philippines. Then from the 2000s, that's from East Timor where you, know, you had most of East Timor destroyed, but there we were on a cargo container that was brought in and we were live. Um, and then in 2005, I went back to the Philippines um, for almost 20 years, I handled CNN in Southeast Asia. I looked at the growth of terrorist networks and then uh, I went home. Home for me was Manila, and I handled the largest television network there. And then in 2012, I decided that traditional media wasn't taking advantage of the new technology, because that's really part of the reason we're where we are today, right? So I embraced it. We started this company called Rappler in 2012. Um, which is which then brings us to today. Uh, this is not my second subpoena. I've lost count of how many subpoenas uh, early this year. One more time, it's not, oh yes. So early this year, in January this year, to kick off my new year, um, the government tried to shut down Rappler. With technology, we were able to, in a year and a half, become the third top online news site. But by early this year, the government comes out with one case, and then it continued coming out with cases. Again, please, it's not, ah, there we go. All right, so I just have to be taller. <laughs> Let me try. Um, so then they started more cases and more cases. Um, I became a tax evader. I'm being charged with being a tax evader when a few months earlier, the government gave us uh, an award for being one of the top corporate taxpayers. One more time. Nope, nope, nope. There. There you go. Tax evasion. Again. It's really not. Hmm, I don't know why. Okay. Then I've appeared at the Department of Justice numerous times this year. I've run out of synonyms for the word ludicrous, ridiculous, um, and it's still not clicking. Thank you. Um, I became the woman fighting President Duterte. I just want to be a journalist. Um, and we became a test case. President Duterte was elected six months before President Trump. And we saw the data in August of 2016 that set down the landscape um, for what you're going through here. It is a global problem. As of November 2017, the first report came out that said cheap armies on social media are rolling back democracy around the world. 30 of 65 countries was the first one. Right now, the Computational Propaganda Project at Oxford University points it at about 48 countries around the world, right? One more time. Um, we're fighting impunity on two fronts in the Philippines, and the first casualty is exactly the number of people killed in the drug war. This is December 26. This is when the Philippine National Police actually admitted that those numbers that you're seeing, the numbers that were killed in direct police operations, that would be this. Today it's over four, five, 4,500, is now connected to this. They splintered it, homicide cases under investigation, but in this one, they put them all together. So you can see at the end of last year, we're talking about 20,000. Now you're talking about almost 30,000 people killed in a year and a half. That's kind of a lot, right? So the reality, though, is we don't know exactly how many have been killed. Part of the reason we've been targeted is because we continue reporting the numbers. Um, in Late August, early October, this uh, 2016, two years ago, almost two years, yes, exactly, two years ago, exactly, this today, um, we came out with our first propaganda series driven by data. 
And I wrote two of the three-part series. That's the reason when, that was why I became a target. Um, within hours of the series coming out, I was bombarded with hate messages. I got to a point where I just started counting how many hate messages. Nine zero, 90 hate messages, not per month, but per hour. 90 hate messages per hour. How do you handle that, right? Why the Philippines? Here's the reason why the Philippines, because in January 2017, we spent the highest number of hours online, on social, on globally, on the internet. And then the next one, early this year, you can see we spend the most time on social media. We're your little petri dish. Um, we're a little laboratory for social media. And, you know, uh, I go back to that and I say, well, we go from the lifetime of human beings to fruit flies. That's what social media does. What social media is your physical social networks on steroids. It moves so fast and you can see it move through society. Here's what we've seen now. Patriotic trolling is a term that's coined by Camille Francois. You'll see her here later on. Um, I've co-opted it a little bit because it, it really describes what we're going through in the Philippines. State-sponsored online hate and harassment campaigns meant to silence and to intimidate. You no longer have to censor because it's the age of abundance. Here, you just flood. You flood the market with lies. And when you do that, you cripple any institutions. You cripple the truth. No one knows what the truth is. As, as early as 2014, um, Women were targeted three times more than men, but now in the Philippines, our data, we're still crunching through the data as it shifts. We've monitored four different waves already, as many as 10 times more than men. And here are the three steps, and I'll show you the people who've, who've been affected. Um, first is you attack the credibility of the target or the institution. You allege corruption and you repeat it exponentially. If you repeat a lie a million times, it's a truth. And that is what technology has helped enable. Um, the second, particularly for women, attack with sexual violence. You inflame biases, you fuel misogyny, and you degrade that woman, you degrade them as a social, uh, as a sexual object. The minute that happens, there's no credibility. And I'll show you where that happened with hashtag arrest Lila DeLima. She is our former um, justice minister. She was also the woman who investigated President Duterte for human rights violations when she was head of the Commission on Human Rights. I put in hashtag arrest Maria Ressa because I'll show this to you from my eyes one more time. See, sorry, click please. It's just not working. Um, hashtag arrest Maria Ressa trended more than a year, uh, more than a year ago. Um, the network, this propaganda network tried to trend it. Um, kind of if you read this, you'll laugh. Rappler just made the Philippines a legitimate target of North Korean nuclear missiles. Just us, single-handedly. Um, um, but they didn't trend it very far. It did then jump to, so this was on Facebook, it jumped to Twitter. Ipatawag na yan, call her to the Senate, hashtag arrest Maria Ressa. That happened before I was actually called to the Senate. Next one. Then it jumps to a real person, a Filipino overseas worker in Singapore. And this guy says, I can smell an arrest and possible closure of Rappler.com. Well, yeah, I could have an arrest warrant soon, but this is a year ago. Next one again. Then we move to the sexual part. Maybe Maria Ressa's dream is to become the ultimate porn star in a gangbang scene. It's not, but, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, it's there. And then one more. So this is a real person as well. Uh, me to the RP government, make sure Maria Ressa gets publicly raped to death when martial law expands to Luzon, it would bring joy in my heart. My only defense is to repost it, shine the light, right? When I did, within hours, the schools of these two boys apologized for the boys, right? So you can see the disinformation, the propaganda shifts and actually has an impact on the real world, on young boys in particular. Next. Sorry, this isn't. So uh, how do we know it's been successful? Well, here we go. Yeah, it's really not working. Lila DeLima has been in prison for nearly two years now, more than a year and a half. Um, there's still really, you, the charges are specious, but the case is ongoing, and she's been in prison. After her, click again. Uh, our chief justice, 
a former Chief Justice, who now doesn't exist in the records of the Supreme Court, was ousted as the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, and then click again. Um, and then just last week, a warrant of arrest was issued to the second opposition senator, uh, Senator Trillanes. His, uh, his amnesty issued in 2010 was revoked. And uh, we expect we're actually on a watch to see when he will actually be picked up and arrested. This is my country today. Next. So what do we do? Let me show you how it happens. And I'll go through this very fast. Please just click with me because this, um, the real world versus the virtual world, right? How can we have two different realities? In the real world, January this year, the Pew Global Attitude Survey said that 86% of Filipinos say that uh, traditional media is fair and accurate. But at the same time, the survey, the trust survey by the Edelman, Edelman's trust survey on social media, said that 83% distrusted traditional media. So in the real world, 86% trust. In social media, 83% distrust. How is that possible? Let me show you the data. Click. We went, we started looking at the disinformation networks, and then we looked at the attack words on traditional media. We pulled some of them out, and I want you to look at bayaran, which means corrupt, bias, with an ED because I'm a grammar Nazi, but you know, it wasn't really. So this is Bayaran from January 2015. Our elections were here in May. And if you can see the attacks, the weaponization of social media happened after our president was elected. And on, on the corrupt, you can see that it's been said so often now, hit exponential times, that it is truth. The same with bias. Again, January 2015, election campaigns here and election here. And you can see the solid line. Next, this is the database. We call it our shark tank. We can take a look at what actually spreads here. This are the fake news sites on this side. These are the Facebook pages that spread it. 97% of Filipinos on the internet are on Facebook. Facebook is our internet. Uh, and you're talking about roughly 63 million Facebook accounts. So this, that the propaganda network, we published end of August, sorry, end of September, beginning of October 2016. Click. If you click this, you, let's go to October 2016, and you can actually see every time it's read, it's been reposted more than 10 times, right? Let's go to Sally Matai, a Facebook account that was reposting 17 times per post. And you can see that it is a cut and paste account, right? This is a, a rudimentary tool we built for our social media team so they know whether they're going to block, delete, or whether they're going to report it or whether they're going to respond. Where did they post? In the campaign pages of Duterte and Bongbong Marcos, who ran for vice president, the son of our former, a former uh, president, Ferdinand Marcos, who declared martial law in the 70s. Every square, this is a full-time job, obviously, right? So you can see, um, you can see the way it works, at least for us. Let's click again. So what do we do? Let's take a look at an attack. Because you can look at that data, and then you can show the networks. When it's like this, this is an attack on our vice president, Lenny Robredo, a woman. Um, hashtag Lenny Leaks. This doesn't mean that much to you right now, right? But if you map the network, let's click. When you map the network, it looks like this. This is the same network that attacks journalists. It's the same network that attacks me. And it is so systematized that it's broken down by demographic. Um, Pseudo-intellectual, middle class, mass base on top. The attack against our vice president in January 2017 originated with the pseudo-intellectual network, content creators, and then spread by the middle class and the mass base. What's interesting is this forms the foundation of our information ecosystem in the Philippines, right? Same here in the United States and many parts of the world. From there, it jumps to click. It jumps to traditional media. Uh, this newspaper, she is also a, a columnist for this newspaper whose big boss is in charge of international public relations for President Duterte. Um, that attack on our vice president was linked. Click again, please to our state media, where um, the secretary in charge of it proudly told me 
a year and a half ago that he sends his folks to China and Russia for training. Um, and then I said, you know, that's not completely the best thing to do, right? And he said, yeah, but it's free. Um, then from there, we close the loop on this entire thing by click again, appointing the mass base account. She's a former singer dancer. Um, and she used to build her Facebook page by having her all girl group do pillow fights on Facebook on, on the weekend. Now she is the in charge of social media for the Philippine government at the presidential palace. That was April 2017. That's our reality today. Let's look at what she did accomplish, hashtag prostitutes. This is um, a, a word that was used against traditional media, not just in the Philippines, but in India, in South Africa. It's sometimes used in the United States, but you can see the impact of Mocha, the mass base account. Um, it, she trended this phrase first. She helped trend it in the Philippines once she did it. All right, let, I'll end with this. Let's keep it. So what did we do? In the Philippines, unlike the United States, because our institutions are so weak, Filipinos went to journalists for some sense of justice, right? So we went back and went to our community and told them, help us, help us deal with this. It takes a network to beat a network, right? Um, it is, that's the battle we're in now. Uh, it's a battle that I hope we win, but we need the network to come together. I'm going to end with a minute and a half video. It isn't just me, but I tell it to you through my eyes only because I've been nothing but a journalist. I've lived according to the standards and ethics of journalism, and now I could be arrested. That's an insane world. So let me show you my other colleagues in the Philippines who continue to fight the fight every day. Let's click. Have you ever been harassed because of your work? Yes. Have you been threatened online? I oh. Have you been called biased? Yes. Have you been called stupid? Yes, plenty of times. By idiots. Have you been called disrespectful? Yes. Have you been accused of corruption? Yes. Have you been called ugly as a response to any story? Yes. Have you been called fake news? Oh yeah, they always say I'm fake news. Anything that's critical is fake, right? Have you been accused of being an imperialist spy? <laughs> yes. Have you been accused of being a communist operative? Yes. Have you been accused of working for the CIA? Yes. Have you been sexually harassed as a journalist? Yes. Has your family been threatened, harassed, or alluded to? Yes, uh, it has. Uh, specifically, my daughter, when she died, uh, there were a lot of people who made fun of that. Have you been threatened with rape? Yes. Yes. No, not me, but my family. Have you been threatened with violence? Yes. Have you been threatened with death? Yes. Have you been told how you're going to be killed? Yes. Has the violence been described to you? Yeah, blow my head off uh, or bury me alive. What will stop you from reporting? Nothing. 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 Death? Did you have to kill me? <laughs> uh, impunity on two fronts, government and social media platforms, were demanding accountability for both. Thank you for letting me tell my story.